Well, good morning, Southlake family and friends. Happy Thursday. So today we're at Proverbs 27, and it's a chapter yet again that's filled with gems of practical wisdom. I want to look at uh, verses 19 to 21 in just a minute. Couldn't resist, though, starting with verse 14 of Proverbs 27. Very appropriate for our morning devotionals because, because it says this. A loud and cheerful greeting early in the morning will be taken as a curse. <laughs> and isn't that true? That's just so, so true, you know. Uh, the Amplified Version puts it this way. He who blesses his neighbor with a loud voice early in the morning, it will be counted as a curse to him for, this is insightful, it will either be annoying, yes, or his purpose will be suspect. Now, that's great. And isn't that true? When people greet us with a loud voice early in the morning, hey, how's it going? Good morning. It's like, what's their agenda today? You're annoying, but then you also have a plan for me. And I'm not sure I'm really all in for that. <laughs> so anyway, very much love the book of Proverbs, not only for its wisdom, but for its humor that we see in it from time to time. But now let's go now a little deeper into uh into verse 19, it says, you now just three verses together that really are great for internal wisdom. It says, verse 19, when you look into water, into water, you see a likeness of your face. When you look into your heart, you see what you are really like. Likeness of your external image by looking into water. What you're really like, though, it says, is not seen there. What you really like is seen in here. It's in your heart. And so just the call to have the courage to not just be satisfied with the superficial life, but to be willing to go deeper with the Lord in terms of our heart and who we really are and allow him to change us at that level, which is what he's doing in all of us, becoming more like Jesus. But then verse 20 says, just as death and destruction are never satisfied. So true. Thessalonians in the New Testament says, that uh, hell is this everlasting destruction away from the presence of the Lord. But just as death and destruction, it says in Proverbs, are never satisfied, so human desire is never satisfied. I think this is such an important idea to, to, and truth to own, and that is that human desire, though God gave it to us, he gave us the five senses and the ability to experience pleasure and, 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 uh, and joy and all of those things, but human desire is never fully satisfied in this life. C.S. Lewis writes about this. That's because God has created us as eternal beings, where even though he's given us desires in this life, those desires are not to define our life. They are, if we, in whatever the love is, the beauty is we're experiencing, the pleasure is, whatever that is that we're attracted to in desire in this life, it's only a foretaste of what can only be fulfilled in heaven with Jesus. So such an important thing. I've tried over the years to learn that when I experience something with a person, a love, a friendship, um, something in any, you know, area of my life that's a pleasure, that's a enjoyable thing, anything of desire that's a great experience, it's like, Lord, I'm not going to own that because I don't want that to own me. I give that to you. I'm thankful for it, but I let it go knowing that the fulfillment of that is awaiting me in heaven. So really, really important to keep you free, I think, in this life. Last verse, verse 21, fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but a person, person is tested by being praised. What do we do? The Bible says when we're praised, it tells us a lot about who we are. And are we humble or are we proud? If when we're praised, we take it in, it changes who we are, how we act, the way we expect to live and be treated, then that's proud, that's arrogant, that's not the intent of God. God will allow us to be tested with praise, and praise will come to each of us in different ways. But when it comes, what God has designed is that we would take in the praise and turn it immediately, vertically up to him, that all the glory in our life, anything about our life, that we know is a gift from God, that you know, however we've developed that or used that, it all comes down to him and his work. He gives us every breath, our next breath we don't own, and it's all grace. And so we receive praise, but we give it immediately to him. And that keeps us being the people that God would have us be and that really honor him. So those practical wisdom for the day. Let me pray. Lord, today we commit our day, our way to you. Thank you for just taking us deeper 
in you, Jesus, and becoming like you. As we commit this day to you, uh, we give you our hearts, fill us with your spirit, and we pray you provide for, protect, and direct us and our families and our church family in Jesus' name, we pray. Well, amen and amen. Well, great, I'm sure join Proverbs. Fast, fasting and prayer continues today. Praying for you, pray for me. And uh, I'll look forward to talking to you again in the morning. Have a great day. God bless.